My name is Ryan Zhou. I'm the co-founder and COO of Coinja, Australia's leading Bitcoin company. I've been a Bitcoiner for three years. I have previously started the world's first margin trading platform for Bitcoin. I was 16 when I first discovered Bitcoin. I saw Bitcoin uh, the first time on Hacker News back in early 2011. At that time, very few people were involved in um, the Bitcoin community, but I was immediately fascinated by the technology. I've always been passionate about uh, how finance and technology can work together, and Bitcoin was the answer I had been looking for for a long time. I was a high school student in Singapore at that time uh, on a scholarship. Um, I'm originally from China. It was really hard to acquire Bitcoin um, anywhere in the world because at, at that time, Bitcoin adoption was very limited uh, worldwide. And in Asia, it was virtually unheard of. I first got my Bitcoin from Mangox after a long process of sending international wire transfers to them. Um, at that time, it was around one US dollar. So a financial derivative um, is a contract that derives its value from the performance of some underlying asset. In other words, this contract itself has value because of the price of some other asset. So common derivatives will include um, options, futures, and swaps. Uh, in the case of Biconica, margin trading was used um, with the derivative called CFD, which stands for Contracts for Difference. It allows traders to enter into leveraged long or short positions of some financial asset, such as Bitcoin, so that they can speculate uh, with um, their margin accounts, which is basically um, their cash with um, certain multiples of leverage. I started Bitcoinica in September 2011, um, and it was the first, and it quickly became the largest margin trading platform for Bitcoin. At its peak in January 2012, Bitcoinica traded over 40 million US dollars in a month. If Bitcoinica volume was included in the total market trading volume of Bitcoin, it will have been around 70% of the combined trading volume of all exchanges. There are many young people building great applications in the cryptocurrency space at the moment. Um, the examples I know include um, the very successful Bitcoin companies like Bitstamp and Blockchain.info. They were both uh, created by very young entrepreneurs. When I started Bitcoinica, I did not have to invest a lot, a lot of money into the platform because Bitcoin made it very easy to build financial applications based on the cryptocurrency P2P protocol. Ethereum is an interesting piece of technology that allows the decentralization of general purpose contracts. It also provides a high level scripting language for developers to build distributed applications on top of the Ethereum P2P network. Um, I think just like how Bitcoin has um, influenced the way we transact financially, Ethereum has a lot of potential to change the way we store documents and execute contracts as well. Yes, you can, um, you can easily use Ethereum to issue your own securities and even use that as a general um, asset exchange. There are already some early applications of programmable money, um, such as decentralized asset exchanges, multi-seek escrows, and even smart contracts um, in some cases. Uh, but I think there are still a lot more we can build um, to make programmable money more useful. Um, there are some um, popular ideas, such as um, distributed identity network, um, some maybe even autonomous corporations on the internet. I haven't been um, 
involved in the mining space, um, but I have observed um, some interesting um, insights in the mining space as well. As the value of Bitcoin increases, the incentives for Bitcoin mining are also increasing. Um, now we are seeing a significant consolidation of mining power, um, mainly because there are many cloud hashing services that are available to small investors who wouldn't have to invest a lot of capital in order to reach economies of scale. And this kind of capital will be injected into the mining market by, more, um, by manufacturing more advanced and more power efficient chips um, that are used only for Bitcoin mining and it will continue to drive up the mining difficulty for Bitcoin. Um, more difficulty mean in Bitcoin mining means it will be harder for new miners to find a block with the same hardware using the same amount of power, but it will also mean that there are great incentives for people to develop more advanced technologies for Bitcoin mining. It's unsurprising that new innovations always come from a niche group of early adopters because it is inherently very hard for many people to realize the benefits of new technologies at the same time. And there are also sometimes uh, technical and regulatory challenges when it comes to adopting new um, technologies and innovations. But I think now we have the internet. Um, spreading great ideas has never been easier. Bitcoin is such a great example. It took only five years for Bitcoin to be a very uh, useful global medium of exchange, and it's already influencing how the world thinks about money. There are many VC investments and private equity investments into the Bitcoin space, uh, especially in 2014. And we are definitely seeing a lot more institutional investors um, trying to um, take a slice in the market. Um, in 2011, most Bitcoin community people were um, either people from the technology space, the geeks and hackers, or uh, people from the traditional financial industry. There are even some bankers and hedge fund traders using Bitcoinica at that time as well, which was really surprising to me. Uh, Bitcoinica had 4,000 users. Coinja is Australia's leading Bitcoin platform. We have uh, wallet services on web and mobile, and we also provide an exchange service for consumers to easily buy and sell their Bitcoins. In our first 12 months of operations, we have helped over 22,000 consumers in Australia to buy and sell over 40 million Australian dollars worth of Bitcoins. We are incredibly proud of our success in turning Australia into one of the leading countries in the world in terms of Bitcoin adoption. And we have many more exciting and interesting announcements to make in the next few months. Um, I have always been a believer in Bitcoin being a parallel currency in the future. Both fiat and cryptocurrencies have their merits in various domains. and. I don't expect one uh, will replace the other anytime soon. Um, Bitcoin is already useful as a global medium of exchange, and I believe that in a couple of years, uh, most people on the internet will either directly or indirectly transact in Bitcoin. Yes, with distributed technologies like Bitcoin, it's entirely possible for a user to uh, use the open source technology under the hood without realizing that they are actually transacting in Bitcoin because it's, it is now actually possible to digitize any kind of asset on a Bitcoin blockchain, even including fiat currencies like Australian dollars or US dollars. You can digitize them um, and record them in any distributed network. I think a high price is necessary for Bitcoin to become less volatile. So. Um, a price increase is inevitable for Bitcoin to be successful. Yeah, I think, um, um, in my opinion, um, in order to, in order for Bitcoin to reach the enough capacity for traders and speculators to um, continue to speculate without uh, wildly influencing its price, the market capitalization must increase. Um, at the same time, Bitcoin is. Um, deflationary, which means that its price must increase as well.
I think drug money has never been a very widespread use of Bitcoin uh, at any period of time in history. Uh, it's impossible to get the exact figures for the percentage of uh, drug money in the Bitcoin ecosystem, but I estimate it's around 1.5% um, in 2011, which is not a significant number. There are maybe uh, thousands or millions of people transacting illegally in fiat currencies like US dollars, and it happens with any other medium of exchange. Um, the reason that Bitcoin got a lot of media um, attention when it comes to um, illegal trade was probably because it's unregulated and it's story worthy that a cryptocurrency can actually influence the world um, in such a way. In the fall of 2008, the world financial system nearly fell apart because of the incompetence and instability of the banking system. With Bitcoin, anyone can send and receive any amount of money anywhere in the world basically for free. And there's nothing that the, the big banks or politicians can do to stop it. At the Money 2020 conference, there was a Bitcoin panel where four Bitcoiners were speaking. And behind me were executives and chairmen of a board of several different credit unions. And one turned to the other and said, these guys don't know the true meaning of evil till we fuck them. You see, I just want your cake.